Character Trait Acquisition A Culture Vulture Hello, I'm H.G. Tudor. Those of you who regularly watch my work know that a narcissist seeks four things, sometimes consciously, more usually subconsciously, control, fuel, character traits, and residual benefits. Character traits are essentially taking the achievements, character, personality of another person and utilising it for the benefit of the narcissist so that it can be used, for instance, to triangulate other people so that they provide fuel and are controlled. It means, for instance, that the narcissist acquires the achievements of their children. The children only got that win because of the brains or the athletic prowess and coaching of that parent. The narcissist acquires what somebody else has done and then passes it off as if they've done it. They bask in the reflected glory of other people's achievements. And this happens repeatedly and regularly. And if you'd like to understand more about the concept of character trait acquisition, please watch my video, Character Trait Acquisition. But it is one of the th aspects of the prime aims that is sought and is important for the fabrication of the construct that allows the narcissist to thrive and survive. The Daily Mail, in an article by Anita Bole, leads with the title, Race Faking Muslim Inclusion Officer Was White Until Boarding School, where she became intrigued by her Turkish roommate's faith and began changing her appearance and lying about her ethnicity, family says. This might well be a narcissist at work engaging in character trait acquisition of another culture and passing it off as her own, even though that's not applicable. Let's dive in and learn more and see if that is the case and what narcissistic indicators exist in this report. Family members of a race-faking white Muslim social justice activist have claimed she turned her back on her heritage after attending boarding school and becoming intrigued by her Turkish roommate's faith. Raquel Saraswati, 39, has been accused of lying, narcissistic indicator, about her alleged Latin South Asian Arab descent, character trait acquisition. Her biological mother confirmed that she is in fact British, German and Italian, revision of history, character trait acquisition. The 39-year-old was outed by a group of individuals who care deeply about the American Friends Service Committee, AFSC, where she works. Her employer have said they still believe her. Members of Saraswati's family, who were privy to her life before the fraudulent claims, exclusively told DailyMail.com that her new life began to take shape while she attended the prestigious Emma Willard School in Troy, New York. From a blonde, blue-eyed, true blue American kid to a social justice advocate who some have accused of cultural vulturism, a member of Saraswati's family unit said the drastic changes she witnessed are nothing less than crazy. The family member has asked to keep her identity anonymous after alleged backlash from Saraswati, who is believed to have confronted her mother Carol Perone after she revealed her true ancestry. Saraswati's relative, who claims to have watched the 39-year-old grow from the age of three till she started to attend the scholarship-funded private girls' school, said she remembers Saraswati, who went by Rachel Seidel then, as a bright and terribly creative young woman. She was a very bright and terribly creative young woman, they said. She went to a small public school where everybody knew her, and then she went to a private school. No one there was American. Most were European or Eastern European. They went on to say that this is where Saraswati met her roommate, a friend from Turkey named Fatima, who followed the Muslim faith. Her junior year at school, she had a roommate that was from Turkey, who was Muslim, and Rachel was very intrigued by that culture. She was a very inquisitive kid, they explained. Rachel converted to the Muslim religion while at school, and we never found out because she was boarding there. We found out much later that this was her new persona appears to be a construct, chameleon-like behaviour. Saraswati's early years were a stark contrast, however, growing up in a Christian household. 
Pictures provided by family members show a young Saraswati with blonde hair and a visibly paler complexion. Her hair appears to become darker as she grew older, but her complexion remains the same. Photos revealed by DailyMail.com from the early 2000s show Saraswati with a similar pale complexion, thin eyebrows and a light blush. However, Saraswati's appearance begins to morph as she publicly rejects her heritage and starts to claim she's Latin, South Asian or of Arab descent. Chameleon behaviour. Rachel was a very sweet, loving child. She went to church with us and she belonged to several different church clubs, they said. We all had the expectation she was going to do great things because she was bright and politically astute, but what we didn't know was it would be in a fraudulent manner. The relative told DailyMail.com that the entire family have been shocked and saddened by the entire situation, believing that at one time they had been close to Saraswati. In 2007, Saraswati herself told conservative media host Glenn Beck she was estranged from her family for reasons that I can't get into. Revision of history, alienation. It's curious and bizarre, the relative said. The comments to Glenn Beck were really bizarre because she said she was estranged from her family. I felt very sad because we thought wrongly that we were very close to Rachel and that she was a very bright, politically astute woman. She went about this all the wrong way. There was no way we had no relationship with her. Her friends, who would continue to see us, still asked us how she was doing and we embarrassingly had to admit we didn't know. Alienation. The family have not spoken to Saraswati, who they say they last saw at her graduation. We went to her graduation, had lunch with her, and never saw her again. Shelving possible disengagement. The family stressed that they have never tried to out Saraswati's double life. Her mother really had no influence on this information surfacing, her double life, where well, we knew about it for a while, and nobody tried to correct it, they said. It came from people concerned about where she worked who suspected something wasn't quite right. We have always said it's a crazy, crazy situation, and the people that we know and knew her growing up also agree that it's just crazy. When seeking comments from the AFC, AFSC on Saraswati's employment, the company sent a statement which said, For over a century, the American Friends Service Committee has worked worldwide with people from all faiths, ethnicities, races and backgrounds for lasting peace with justice. Through our history and continuing today, AFSC has brought the Quaker belief in equity and the divine light in every person into vital work across the United States and around the world. We see ending all forms of racism as a critical part of this work, both within our organisation and in the world. When speaking to Saraswati, who works as the company's chief equity, inclusion and culture officer, they said she remains loyal to the mission. She is currently facing public allegations that she misrepresented her background and past associations, revision of history. She assures us that she remains loyal to AFC's mission, and we believe her. This is a deeply personal issue, and as her employer we respect her privacy. We do not require any employee to prove their race or ethnicity as a condition of employment. That would be unethical and illegal. At this time, the company are considering ways to move forward in a thoughtful and humane way, saying they are taking in many perspectives. We must do our best to hear each other, to act with kindness, grace, integrity and care for all individuals. These are the values at the core of AFSC. I definitely feel conned. I feel deceived, Oscar Pierre Castro, a human resources professional who participated in the search committee to fill Saraswati's position, said to The Intercept. An open letter from the anonymous group provided an in-depth analysis of the 39-year-old's ancestry and her work and expressed concern about her role. They accused Saraswati, who converted to Islam in high school and has since come out as gay, sexual fluidity, of cultural vulturism and noted the shades of bronzer she applies to her face have become darker over time, chameleon-like behaviour. This claim appears to be true. The early 2000 picture showing a younger Saraswati with her hair pulled back and only a small amount of makeup on her cheeks. The authors of the damning open letter called on AFSC to investigate why a member of its most senior leadership has so profoundly eroded trust among people of colour. They noted her appearance on conservative hosted shows and asked, are there external entities with whom Saraswati is collaborating? Saraswati's case is being likened to that of Rachel Dolezal, a white woman who in 2015 was exposed as having posed for years as a black, rising to become president of an NAACP chapter in Washington. 
Mark Graham, AFSC's Chief Marketing and Communications Officer, so the organisation has given Raquel the opportunity to address the allegations against her and Raquel stands by her identity. He added Raquel also assures us that she remains loyal to AFC's mission, which we firmly believe. Saraswati's identity was first questioned by media commentator Sana Saeed, who tweeted in 2015, Can we talk about Raquel Dolazal in the Muslim community? Y'all know who I mean. The allegations were given fresh impetus this week. On February the 10th, the letter was published on Medium, and on February the 16th, the Intercept spoke to Saraswati's biological mother, Carol Peroni, who confirmed her daughter was not a person of colour. I call her Rachel. I don't know why she's doing what she's doing. Peroni said her daughter is of British, German and Italian descent, not Latin, South Asian or Arab, as she claims. I'm as white as the driven snow, and so is she, she claimed. Peroni told the site that her daughter converted to Islam in high school, which likely informed her decision to present herself as another ethnicity. I'm German and British and her father was Calabrese Italian, her mother added. She's chosen to live a lie, and I find that very, very sad. Saraswati herself, in 2007, told conservative media host Glenn Beck she was estranged from her family, for other reasons that I can't get into. Peroni was adopted by Carl and Winfred Seidel, who ran a guest house in the Catskill Mountains in Wyndham, New York. Then goes into more detail about the family. Sarazati was born in Patterson, New Jersey, and spent large amounts of time in Wyndham, where she attended school before being sent to boarding school in Troy, New York. She studied at Simmons University in Boston, settling Massachusetts, and marrying her girlfriend, Anne Dea Colby, in 2005. 2004, the couple was mentioned in a Boston Globe feature, in which Saraswati went by the name Seidel and said she was of Arab and Latin descent. Raquel Evita Seidel, 20 of Brookline, and she and her girlfriend, Anne Deo Colby, have been together nine months, the author wrote. While they are confident they want to marry, they also want to take the time to plan something that respects Seidel's Arab and Latin traditions and 33-year-old Colby's Vietnamese traditions. We want it to be something special, not about hype, not about media. Sometime around the time of the article, she switched her name to Saraswati. In 2005, she was performing belly dances under a new name. The couple are now divorced and Saraswati moved from Massachusetts to Pennsylvania, where she now lives. She took on a higher profile after 9-11, appearing on Beck's show and in a 2013 film produced by the Clarion Project, an organisation the Southern Poverty Law Centre said specialised in rabidly anti-Muslim films. She worked for the American Islamic Forum for Democracy, another group that has been accused of promoting Islamophobia. In 2017, she told Philly Mag, all too often progressive and well-meaning people ally with organisations and individuals in marginalised or targeted communities without consulting those on the margins of those communities, like LGBTQ2SIA people, dissidents, women, minority sex, racial and ethnic minorities, etc. On her Facebook page, she promotes a book entitled All the White Friends I Couldn't Keep. When Saraswati applied for a job at AFSC, Castro said that her ethnicity played a part in the decision to appoint her in June 2021 as Chief Equity, Inclusion and Culture Officer. Great, a person of colour, a queer person of colour who happens to be a Muslim, it's a woman, all these things, and someone who seems to get it, Castro told The Intercept. He said he was impressed by her resume and her charisma. It seemed that there was an element of lived experience and understanding because of the lived experience, not just the academic and extra training that come with being in a position where you're an equity and inclusion practitioner, he said. The AFSC has a history of being infiltrated by the FBI, The Intercept noted, and has been targeted by pro-Israel groups due to its work on the Palestinian cause. Supporters of the AFSC told The Intercept they are now concerned about Saraswati, given the misleading statements she made about her identity. Imagine the trauma of people who confided in her, trusted her and shared sensitive information about their work and about their lives, thinking that she's a fellow person of colour, an AFSC leader. And now, all of a sudden, it's a white woman with a right-wing history. It's scary. That's the information that the Mail has published about her. But are we dealing with a narcissist? Well, we can't say for certain because we don't have enough information about her behaviours with other people and throughout her life. But there is a strong suggestion that she might be one. The reason being, of course, is that she has revised history, that she has invented uh, events that have taken place. She has not shown accountability for her behaviours. She has told lies. She's shown a sense of entitlement to behave in the way that she has. 
And there is a significant character trait acquisition in relation to taking on another culture and passing it off as their own. Now, of course, many people might convert to a particular religion. And where it's done by a narcissist, that, of course, is character trait acquisition. But where it's done by a non-narcissist, it isn't. People are free, of course, to follow whatever religion they might like even if it's not one that's perhaps traditionally associated with the place where they're from or their race. Here, there is a wholesale acquisition of another culture and, of course, faking being of that culture in terms of changing her appearance over time. There are strong indicators and we would need more information to make a firm assessment as to her being a narcissist. But at this juncture, one would say there's certainly material that supports that she might well be. And this could be an example of considerable character trait acquisition, which has then enabled her to control other people through presenting herself as being of a different ethnicity, to draw fuel from their responses, and of course a residual benefit of securing a paid employment based upon what she misrepresented herself as. I'm H.G. Tudor. Thank you for listening.